Now to this week's episode on the tech ecosystem in Indonesia with a woman who is really a, a pioneer in this space. My special guest today, and uh, maybe I'll ap apologize in advance for mispronouncing her last name, is Shinta Latoyo Duwana Wadoyo. <laughs> and she's the founder of Boobu.com, the leading digital media agency in Indonesia. Shinta is also recognized by Globe Asia as one of the most powerful women in tech. Shinta, it's such a pleasure to have you on my show. Welcome. Thank you, Deidre, calling me. And it's early morning in New York, I know, but it's already like um, almost 8 p.m. here in Indonesia. <laughs> oh, wow. Okay, so we big time difference. How did I, how did I uh, do with your, your last name? <laughs> Uh, well, you can just call me Shinta Bubu if it's easier, because that's what everyone calls me. Even for Indonesian, my last name is hard. So really, well, <laughs> I, I am going to take you up on that and call you Shinta Bubu, <laughs> which sounds good. So Shinta, you're referred to as a real trailblazer in Indonesia in the digital landscape, and I've already mentioned that you were recognized by Globe Asia as one of the 99 most powerful women. So congratulations on that. Uh, but I guess the, oh. the, the big question is, how did you get your start in tech in Indonesia? Yeah, well, um, I started actually my first startup in 96, which is boobu.com. Um, you know, back then we, uh, when barely any Indonesians are aware of the internet, let alone, um, uh, they even probably don't have internet connection at that time. But I guess my fascination and love for internet started back when, you know, I was pursuing my MBA degree. I'm not an IT background. Uh, my, my bachelor degree is in architecture, so it has nothing to do with IT. But then, you know, when I was taking my MBA, um, I was, um, you know, I had the opportunity to work at the computer lab as the graduate assistant um, of that university because I studied in uh, my MBA in Portland State University in Oregon. Um, so I guess that's when my first fascination on internet began, you know, um, I remember when I opened what you call the World Wide Web at that time. <laughs> yes. Um, yes, it's WWW. Yeah. And so I was like, oh my God, what kind of media is this? I mean, like I can see a website where I can totally ask my friend who's on a different country to look at the exact same thing. So I said, this is just fascinating. And I, I have this vision that this is going to be one of the most powerful media in the world later on, like maybe not now, you know, at that time, but you know, in the future, this is like definitely going to be very powerful. I guess, uh, with that, um, you know, vision that I have, you know, I, I fell in love with internet, you know, and I started, um, creating websites so i taught myself how to create a website through the internet um and so you know i started creating website and actually boo boo started as a web development company so we create website for other companies well that's that's amazing because back in 1996 it must have been yes. a, a lot different to create a website now it's so much easier with the yes, you know cms platforms that we have mm -hmm. it, it's simple so, you know, when when you launched Boo Boo in 1996, which does seem like ages ago, what challenges did you face maybe back then as an internet startup, and and maybe even compare it to what goes on now as far as challenges? I think um, you know I was very early in the internet industry, even even from for US. I think it was quite early, right, ninety six, and you know back then uh, the main challenges was actually educating the market about the importance of internet and the many opportunities that you know it can bring. Um, when you know so. Probably one of my biggest challenge was actually getting prospective clients. You know, I don't think anybody think they need a website at that time because they probably don't even have internet connection at that time. So um, I think that was like my biggest challenge is, you know, getting the first client and then, of course, getting your team set up was kind of difficult because, you know, I have to find somebody who who understands how to program, somebody who understands how to design websites. So it was not easy at that time, actually. And, um, you know, in the two decades that I'm in the industry, you know, I've started and, you know, shut down many 
many companies as well. Uh, and it's not like, you know, it's been a smooth sailing from for that 20, 20 years of my, right. my life in the <laughs> industry. But, you know, um, many of the companies that I shut down, it was like early 2000, you know, because that was also the... I think the internet bu bubble in the U.S. Oh yes, I think it's just I was too early, and I think I vision everything just too early. Um, so I guess um, that was like one of the challenges that I have along the way uh, until where I am right now. But I believe challenges uh, and all the failures that I had was you know part of being an entrepreneur, and it's also an asset of being an entrepreneur because you learn from your mistake. Oh, definitely. So. Yeah. You know, bringing that that internet bubble, I think, taught us mm -hmm. a lot moving forward. Um, so you pretty much took your your lessons of your old companies, and and now you know starting um, a new venture. Um, for mm -hmm. example, I know that one of your late latest ventures is VC Network, which yes. you've launched. Did you you know face challenges there, or do you feel it's a, a lot easier now in tech to to launch something? Yes. It's definitely way easier now. Uh, we have the uh, like probably uh, an ecosystem that can help in terms of you know getting the human resource, uh, getting the client, you know, or getting people to understand what you're doing. It's totally different, uh, different ecosystem and different environment uh, from you know way to '96, of course. And um, yeah, you're uh, you're speaking about uh, VC network. It's something that I just launched early this year, um, and it's an online platform that connects uh, venture capitals and you know with high growth entrepreneurs. So it's matching uh, venture capital with with tech startups or startups, and you know, and uh, which will include like. So when you go to the website, you will see um, the information on the founder, on the company who are uh, seek, seeking for funding. And then uh, once they submit their business plan, uh, you know, they can they can get match uh, to the to the venture capital that you know, are listed on in our website as well. That's really interesting. So let's talk a little bit about the ecosystem. Um, and, you know, the, the tech market as it is, how does the Indonesia tech market look today? And, you know, are there similarities to Silicon Valley? Well, I think uh, the tech market in Indonesia is, is still far from mature, like if you want to compare it to Silicon Valley. But I think it's very promising and, you know, there's sign of growth. Uh, Indonesia is home of a very large population, 250 million people. And we're about almost 90 million internet users, but the penetration of mobile is about 120%. So more of... Uh, a lot of people own more than one phone. Um, so I think you see that uh, there's a dynamic uh, for the growth of uh, digital economy in the country. Uh, for instance, more and more people are also embracing e-commerce. Um, however, e-commerce is only, I think, makes up about 1% uh, of market in Indonesia. And there's still, there, I think it's a long way for Indonesia uh, to match up with Silicon Valley because I know it, it took also Silicon Valley like 20 years or something to be where it is right now, right? Well, there's a growing number of startups and investment community here in Indonesia. Um, but I think there need to be more integration with the government and other institutions such as probably, I think universities could be a good example. And Indonesia still need to catch up on policies because, you know, um, that will grow with the startup ecosystem. Um, you know, I'm talking about probably like tax incentive for angel investors, right. you know, um, furthermore, universities also could play a role probably in encouraging innovation and research for the tech industry. Um, you know, like what Stanford is doing, for instance. And, you know, I always believe that uh, startups, what they need, number one, is networking. So actually, I started a nonprofit organization last year based in Silicon Valley together three of, with three of my friends who are based over there. And uh, it's called Silicon Valley Asia Technology Alliance. The idea is to bridge um, Southeast Asia and Asia countries to Silicon Valley, hoping that there'll be uh, networking, uh, you know, um, 
collaboration within the two places, um, within the you know the Asian countries and Silicon Valley. And hopefully, I can push the growth of tech startup, especially in Indonesia, because that's where I'm at. Oh, sure. So with, with everything that you're doing, is especially bridging this gap, um, do you, are you finding more women getting involved in the tech ecosystem, whether it's, you know, in your country or, or even in the U.S.? Well, if you if you're talking about Indonesia, uh, well, there's there's like uh, I've seen it just growing, but I think, uh, you know, it's not enough yet. I mean, we, I think we can do better than that. Unfortunately, there's like uh, an assumption in society that tech is not a girl thing. Mm -hmm. I think that's how it is here as well in Indonesia. So I think it's preventing women to get uh, into tech. Um, but I, I'm, I'm hoping that my assumption is also changing because, you know, um, actually there are increasing number of women in Indonesia in tech. Um, there's a number of company like, uh, Doku, which is a payment gateway, one of the biggest one in Indonesia. It's led by a women CEO. Her name is Nabila Asagaf. And I know there's uh, this big um, Muslim e-commerce, fashion e-commerce uh, uh, site called Hijab, which is the CEO is also a woman. And it's really a big one. And it's taking global uh, market as well. So, um, you know, it's, it's great to see uh, these women are actually moving towards in creating uh, more uh, startup, you know, to become more active and to push their startup to even become a global player. Um, I think furthermore, where there are the communities set up by women in tech here, um, there need, I think there need to be more done by public institutions. You know, again, I think universities can encourage women to enter tax and um, there are report, reportedly increasing amount of uh, women taking tech and engin engineering majors. Right. But um, I think very few of them actually entered the tech workforce. And I hope that uh, we can see a change in that one soon. Um, and I'm pushing a lot of women initiative as well in the country. Uh, so I'm trying to get um, more women startup to be mentored by me as well. So let's see. Yeah. <laughs> I think, um, you know, um, I've never seen myself like, you know, segregating myself being a woman and in tech. As long as, you know, I can prove myself to anyone that I know what I'm doing. Um, I think at the end of the day, even the men or the other women, they, you know, they just respect what you do. Um, but, you know, as women, you know, we are blessed with so many more <laughs> things <laughs> than men. Uh, no offense to men. <laughs> but, yeah, we're really good in, you know, multitasking. We're a very detailed person. So, actually, even programmers, I, I had women programmers in my companies. They're more detailed, actually, than the guys. Yeah. Oh, that's so, interesting. Yeah, but you know, there's just not many women interested to do programming. That's a problem. <laughs> yeah. So we need we need to make it sound like a fun thing for women to to do. Actually, because I think it's a great job, and yes. we need more developers in this world, definitely. Oh, I, I think so too. Did anybody in particular influence you? Um, as far as it comes to tech, I know that you said that your background is in architecture, so. Yes. And you had a definitely a curiosity and, and love for the internet. Was there anyone in your life, either business-wise or even personally, um, who supported you and said, go for it? Or is this just completely a drive from within? I think, I think it's, of course, you know, when we talk who's... Um, the person is always my parents, I think one. And then uh, just my grandma, who's, uh, she, uh, she was a very famous politician here in the country. Um, and I think she inspired me to see that what women can do. Because, you know, during, uh, I remember I saw a picture of her in New York Times in 1962. Oh, wow. She was, she was a, we call her the traveling ambassador. So she travels different countries to represent Indonesia. And, you know, I saw that picture of her in New York at New York Times. She was leading a delegation at United Nations. Uh, you know, she, she led like 19 men. It was 1960. Oh. In 1960, so like, wow, yes, yes. that's amazing. 1962, I remember. So I was like, hey, my grandma can do it at that time, you know. I think anybody can do it, you know. 
any women should be able to do whatever they want. <laughs> oh, I, <laughs> I agree 100%. And what a great role model. Um, going back to your, your VC network, um, are you, and maybe it's too early on, but do you think you're going to see women looking to this network, feeling comfortable, uh, you know, a place where they can excel and, you know, share information? Definitely, because, uh, because I'm doing this together with my partner, Jenny Kyuta. Uh, she's, Jenny, uh, she's I based, love her. Yes, yeah. yes, yes. Yeah, um, definitely. I love her too. She's, she's based in LA. Um, and, you know, uh, we both uh, agreed that, you know, we want to also open VC Network for opportunity for women founders. And so they can be discovered by by the, uh, the venture capitals as well, because I know uh, not many uh, women founders are being funded by venture capitals and we want to change that. So hopefully we can we can help push that part through this yeah. VC Network. Now, are you doing any kind of coaching with the, these women who want to be a part of the network, or is it really just come show your business plan? At you know? the moment, we're uh, we're not doing it, but we're thinking of a platform how we can not only me, but we want to involve other women to coach as well within the platform. So that's something probably the next step. But at the moment, uh, unfortunately, we're not doing that yet. But that's something along our roadmap, actually. Oh. You guys would be great at it. So, you know, Jenny was on this show and we had a great conversation and I will never forget, you know, one thing that stood out in my mind, you probably know this about her, is that she doesn't take no (laughs) for an answer, right? Like that is just, that is something that I always remember about Jenny. (laughs) Well, I I admire what you're, you're both doing. Great, great work. Thank you. I've been chatting with my special guest, Shinta Boo, who is the founder of BooBoo.com. Uh, in the next episode, Shinta will share more on the important lessons she's learned as a woman in tech and in business. Erica Breckenridge, welcome back to the show. Shinta Boo, founder of BooBoo.com, and I were just chatting about the launch of her business and the Indonesia tech market, and also uh, what's going on in, in tech today. So, Shinta, let, let's go back to you as a woman in tech and a woman in business. Maybe what, what are some of the most important things that you've learned or the most important thing that you've learned? I think, um, you know, I've learned that it doesn't matter if you're a woman or a man, <laughs> like what I said earlier, as long as you can prove that you're worth, you know, you'll be able to succeed in whatever field that you're in. As long, you know, you show your passion and you really uh, do what, you know, the best that you can with that, um, you know, business or the passion that you're into. And what matters is, I think, uh, focusing on building a great company, great product, great great business and um you know making sure that the business will survive um in the future and i think i've also learned how important building a very extensive and strong network as an entrepreneur when you're in business i think number one the most important thing is networking and so i've networked with great people such as cheryl sandberg i met her like a couple of times oh that's Um, great you know sat down with her and I think she's very inspirational. So I think having having inspirations, having uh, mentors is also really important. Um, and I think I have to say, I owe a lot of my achievement from my networks and the inspiration and advice they have given me so far. How do you scale such a large network? Um, you know, are you able to keep up with so many relationships? Are you only keeping, you know, a, a close few around as your top advisors? You know, how, how do you work so many different people? Because there's so many opportunities that come with these relationships. Yeah, definitely. It's 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 not easy to uh, you know to stay in touch or keep up with everybody, but um, I think um, I've always um, see that the network that you have, um, if you can at least keep in touch with them through social medias. I think that'll be great because, you know, we're so lucky these days. There's so many things that can help us, you know, the technology, the applications that can help us to get, I mean, to stay in touch with everyone, even though, you know, we don't do it often or we don't do it frequently, but staying in touch through the social media, through apps, you know, there's just so many ways. And how do you pick and choose which one is, um, you know, the network that you want to work with? 
uh, it goes back again what you're doing at the moment, you know, and then um, everyone is, is important. Whoever you meet along the road of your business, I think it's important because, you know, anyone you meet is probably in the future is someone who's going to help you. So I think it's really important to keep in touch with them, even though, you know, with the smallest possible way, maybe through social network or so, yeah, social media or something. Right. I mean, that people are put uh, on our path for a reason. So exactly. social media, there, you know, w- with everything that we can do, there's no excuse to not be able to, to keep be in touch. Yes. Yeah. Now, you had mentioned before, um, going back to some of the businesses that that didn't work out. And, and that is, yeah. you know, typical of the entrepreneur. Um, yes. What what does the word failure mean to you? And what do you want to share with listeners about failure? I think failure um, to me is an invaluable learning experience or process being an entrepreneur, you know, could ever have. Because, you know, I may have a boo-boo for the past 20 years. I mean, and it's still going strong today. But I have also uh, closed down so many ventures along the way and Regardless, you know, I've never seen that as a def- defeat. Instead, it made me stronger. It made it was it becomes like my asset, asset as an entrepreneur because I've done this, I've done that. Like you know, it's the uh, the saying, "Been there, done that." I think I've done that in this industry. Right. I was a venture capitalist. I I started one of the uh, early marketplace e-commerce here in Indonesia. I've I've done mobile uh, mobile companies. I've done everything. So it's, it becomes part who I am right now. So, and I think um, entrepreneurs need to understand that failure is not something to be feared. Uh, at one point or another, I think we'll, we'll be encountering some sort of failure. And when we do, what we must take of the failure is a lesson learned. Because, you know, I think that's, that's really important. And for me, by failing... I think you know what mistakes you shouldn't make next time, hopefully. Well, yes. I do sometimes make mistakes twice. <laughs> I'm not saying that. But, um, you know, it's, it's getting the knowledge what works and what doesn't. Um, I think when encountering failure, um, it's also a good idea to ask for feedbacks, you know, from your customers, from your partners, you know, from people around you, you know, get more advice because, you know, you failed. So you want to get advice from others. So you learn from it, something like that. That's a really important point because, you know, what makes the entrepreneur is what you do with the failure and all the information that you gather around it. So key point, find out, you know, yes, things, things can always go wrong um, and use your network and the folks around you to kind Mm -hmm. of give you insights. Although in our, in our gut, we probably, we know so that we don't make the mistakes moving forward again. I think it was just, um, Rachel McCrary who was on the show who said, you know, if I'm in a room and there's a bunch of people around me, if somebody, if an entrepreneur has failed at a business venture, you know, it's probably the smartest person in the room. (laughs) And I just love Uh, that. Right. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. That that was really cool that she said that. So, uh, can you remember an important piece of advice that maybe somebody has given to you that's really stuck throughout your entire career? Um, and, you know, maybe who is this person who gave you the advice? Actually, uh, it's funny that, you know, I've mentioned my grandma before she passed away, actually. Um, but um, I remember she told me that, you know, uh, it's the same if you're a woman or a man. All you need to do is like proof you can do it. So you don't have to be afraid to do anything. So I guess that's why I entered the tech industry because it just fascinated me, even though it was like a man's world, especially in the early 90s. But, you know, I remember her, you know, her words to me that, you know, you don't you don't have to be afraid because you're a woman because, you know, you can do anything. And, you know, you just have, I mean, yeah, we do as women probably have to prove more. But then once you prove yourself, you know, everything is just the same between men and women. So that's actually that sticks to me until today. And, you know, I'm still here. Yes. (laughs) And And hopefully going stronger. (laughs) I'm doing well. Well, that's excellent advice. Um, You know what? And, And we shouldn't, we shouldn't fear anything. 
Um, so I'm, I'm glad your grandma gave that advice and you just shared that with all of us. Uh, what do you think is the most challenging aspect for any entrepreneur when it comes to launching their business, let alone the whole, I've got to get VC funding, but just the, the launch alone? I think um, for me, I always uh, tell my my startups because I came from the early generation of tech startup. I always tell my startup to monetize as early as possible. For me, I don't know. Mm-hmm. You know, there's there's probably other other startups or other venture capital who doesn't mind if their startups do not monetize right. uh, from early on. But in my case, I always tell them get a business model that works as soon as possible because um also you know you may not need investor if your business model really works well because you can actually grow your company without an investor that's what i did i started from zero there was no angel investor there was no venture capital when i started the company and you know so i i always tell them that you know um it's important also to be able to quickly adapt to changes so um when you know you see your business model doesn't work start pivoting right away Mm -hmm. and then you know don't be afraid to take risks don't be afraid to make mistakes because you know you can always go back up as soon as possible so that's that's i think one of the challenges that uh the newer the newer entrepreneurs these days always they think from the beginning they need to get venture capital money Mm -hmm. well rather than thinking what is a great business model that can monetize the company right away so. Interesting. So wait, uh, is there that expectation um, when you go in front of, you know, let's say, you know, you, you weren't sure if you were going to self-fund or go in front of VCs, but you yeah. do your projections and, you know, you, you hear that a lot of startups, you know, they're going to be operating in the red for a certain amount of time yes. and then it's going to, you'll be in the black. black but yes. your model literally is no, 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 no. You're not going to operate in the red. You got to get to the black as soon as possible, which is really the best way (laughs) I would think to operate. uh, Of course, it's not easy to get to the black right away. It takes me a while as well, Mm -hmm. but you know, as an entrepreneur, you need to be very innovative. You have to be very creative. If you cannot get this, this company that you're launching to be in, in the black as soon as possible, start thinking how to create another uh, money-making thing that can help support your company. Because that's what an entrepreneur yeah. does, you know. They always have to think creatively how to make sure the company survives. So <laughs> that's, yeah. that's why usually uh, when I do mentoring, they're like looking at me like, oh no. <laughs> that means she's saying like, you cannot ask money first. <laughs> right. But you know, um, I all, I'm very supportive. You know, that's why we have VC network. And I also created in Indonesia, I created an angel, uh, angel investor network. There's 15 of us, a uh, whole bunch of uh, my friends. And we created this uh, angel network to help seed funding for startups. So it's not that, you know, um, I'm not into helping funding, but I really would love uh, for entrepreneurs to think upfront about how to monetize because uh, you want your company to be healthy as soon as possible. Oh, I think that is the best advice. I think it's really cool that you have this whole angel investor network. That uh, I, I, you know, would hope that more women would get into that as time goes on. Two really important words that you said: innovative and and creative. Creative, yeah, yeah. And you know what? Which which begs the question. Uh, you know, at the end of the day, mm-hmm. what does success look like? for you so at the moment i have this mission and vision <laughs> for you know um my well my my personal uh mission is to put my country which is indonesia on the global digital map so i want people to think of digital and technology when they hear the word or the name of, of indonesia mm-hmm. and it's not easy i know it's a long way uh but i believe we have that potential we have the talents and everything and um yeah i just want people to have recognized indonesia as a digital country and um and that would be like a success for me because that's the reason why i'm doing all this initiative is to push the tech startup here in indonesia to become a global player because right now indonesia is known as the users we're like biggest facebook user yeah. biggest twitter users we're like biggest here and there but 
we're not the players. So right. I would love to see companies coming from this country to become also one of the global players. Oh, that, that would be very cool. That's an awesome vision. <laughs> and anything that is, um, you know, that, that type of initiative will take time. And, yes, definitely. You know, but you have to start, right? <laughs> exactly, exactly. You, you ha definitely have to start. So you have given um, a lot of advice throughout this, you know, our entire discussion. But, you know, maybe you could just boil it down. What, what advice would you give to others to help them pursue their career dreams? Well, um, you know, I think uh, if you have ideas and you want to become an entrepreneur, you just have to act on it. Uh, because, you know, I have this saying, because idea without, uh, without execution is just a hobby, mm -hmm. it just, it, which is for me is a hobby of daydreaming because you just, you know, daydream of ideas every single day, yeah. but you don't execute it. So stop doing that, you know, just take the action, just do it, take risks, you know, because that's what, you know, being an entrepreneur is. And, you know, I, you know, because I have that mission, one thing, the entrepreneurs to grow big and become global player. So I always tell my my um, the men uh, the the startup that I mentor to think big from the beginning because you know uh, you may start small but start thinking big because uh, that's how I did it because you know I always think that my company Boo Boo will be a big company. So I'm from the beginning I always placed placed it as something big already in my mind. So I think, I think that's a great way to put yourself, your mindset, because being an entrepreneur is all mindset. It's all just mindset. Oh, what, what, you know, yeah. What do you want, you know, as an entrepreneur, put that in your mind and it'll, it'll come true. As long as you put your passion and hard work, of course. You know, it. you do, you, you have to put it in your mind and visualize it. Yes, visualize it. Uh, I think it was um, the author of um, Executive Toughness, Jason Selk, Dr. Jason Selk, who um, gives an exercise where you literally have to see something and play it over in your mind at night, right. before, yes. whatever you're trying to get, whatever your career or your goal looks like, you know, see it in your head at night or maybe when you wake up in the morning wake up yeah, yeah and and that you know otherwise you're not going to get there and i agree with you that you have to think big because if you put a little baby step as a as a goal then you know it's going to take you a really long forever. time yes. and forever where if you have the big goal you can just map it out and and realize that great big things are worth it and they take time like you yeah, said yeah. Well, <laughs> last question. How can my listeners find out more about you and your work? Well, you can uh, find out through my Facebook, my Twitter, my Instagram. It's at Shintabubu, S-H-I-N-T-A-B-U-B-U. -B -U. So, and then there's my website, uh, uh, my company website, actually, www.bubu.com. Awesome. Well, <laughs> Shinta, thank you so much for joining us today, for sharing your journey. You're thank changing you so the much, face Deirdre. of tech. Oh, you're welcome. You're, you're doing so much in tech for women. Uh, so we really appreciate your insights and all of your tips that you shared today. So thank you. Thank you so much. It's been a pleasure talking to you.